FluxDev Hyperloras are here and they're available in 8 and 16 steps. Now getting straight to it, there's an 8 and 16 step LoRa. Both file sizes are about 1.4, actually just under. Kind of big for a LoRa, but considering that it's very close to the original dev model, it's pretty good. It's recommended to use a weight of 0.125 to 0.16. And you could use them with any of the dev models, whether it be the FP16, FP8, GGUF, or the NF4. As always, I'm going to leave a link in the description below to a Google Doc that includes all the other dev models as well as these Hyperloras. And this was done by ByteDance. They have quite a few other Hyperloras, even ones for SD 1.5, for SD 3. But at the very top, you'll see the 16 step and the 8 step LoRa here. Go ahead and download these. And you want to make sure that you download them into your LoRa folder. If you're using the default Forge location, you'll find them under Web UI Models and LoRa. You want to dump them in there. And to use the LoRa, what you want to do is, let me zoom in closer here. Obviously set your checkpoint. For me, I'm using the FP8. And then under Diffusion and Low Bits, you want to change this to Automatic FP16 LoRa. If you're using the NF4, you can use this one. Because if you don't use this option, it's going to keep loading the LoRa every generation you do. So if you set it up this way, you don't have to reload the LoRa all the time. Just keep generating and generating. And then to activate the LoRa, you just got to go into the LoRa tab, find it, click on the LoRa, and then over here is where you want to set the weight. I put mine at 0.125. Now in terms of speed, this is what I'm getting for my setup. Ryzen 5800X 3060 Ti, eight gigabytes of VRAM, 32 gigabytes of system RAM. And for 832 by 1152, I'm getting about 27 seconds on average. And, and for the 16 step, 155. Now for my particular setup, the 16 step LoRa really isn't beneficial. I might as well just use the regular dev model because I am getting similar speeds with the regular model but the eight step is worth it for someone like myself because it really cuts that time almost in half. The one thing you're going to notice with the eight step LoRa, there is quite a bit of quality degradation. It's not as evident in some images, but I find especially with people in skin, you're going to notice results like this. If I zoom in here, you'll see the artifacting is quite evident, right? Now, if you come across this, the simple solution is just to increase the steps. Try 10 or 12 steps. Of course, it's going to take a little bit longer, but once again, it doesn't happen all the time. Just be mindful of that. Now, with that being said, I've done some side-by-side -side comparisons between the standard FP8 model, Hyper 16 here in the middle, Hyper 8 on the right. We see here the 8 and the 16 look very similar in terms of the outfit, the accessories, very different accessories though compared to the FP8. Here the 16 to the FP8 is very similar. The 8 step model still looks great, but you'll notice that they're closer to the foreground in terms of composition. The UFO at the top is a little bit different, but generally the same concept as the FP8. Now this one I find with the, I don't know if you can see the little grimace on the guy's face here. It's evident in the 16 step one, but in the hyper eight, we lose that detail. We look at the horns, different horns. So once again, with all these variations, we're going to get slight differences. If we even look at the, the veins within the wings here, it looks a lot more prominent than the FP8. This particular example is a panda warrior that I like to prompt for. And you'll notice in the background, especially, it's a lot more detailed, even more detailed than the FP8. Whereas the Hyper 8 one, there's not much of a background. Even the details on the ground are a little bit lacking and of course the armor we've got a full set here where this one's more like a chest armor quite like the hyper 16 one here now this one is actually really interesting because the original prompt is supposed to be a hybrid batman superman character and you see with the hyper models they didn't pick up the the batman portion it got the colors right but both don't have the mask but as you can see with the 8 and 16 they still look very comparable and you'll notice the depth of field on FP8 is much stronger, where the hyper models, the depth of field is very deep. It's not shallow. Now in terms of text, it still performs very well. The prompt was very simple, but the main focus was to have flux models as the title saying Schnell merged in Hyperlora. As we look at the examples, we see it's written in chalk. The spelling is correct. 
everything looks great. Now I would say out of like a batch of 10, almost 50% of them had gibberish here. So compared to the regular dev models, I would say it is lacking in text just a little bit, or it could be this particular prompt, who knows. <laughs> and the same thing with the 16 step Laura, followed the prompt really well, got the spelling right. But of course you are gonna get some weird ones as well. But for the most part, I would say the text performs pretty well. In the next video, we're going to take a look at the various Schnell and Merge models. So make sure to come back and check those out when that video goes live. Now, if you haven't seen the dev model comparisons, make sure to check it out right here where we compare the FP8, GGUF, and NF4 models and which one is best for you. Until that next video, my friends, I'll see you when I see you.